What is a coordinate system? And how do I determine new coordinate systems that are not just the standard coordinate system we've probably seen, like this coordinate system that I have here? I've written down the standard coordinate system, and I've in particular put the standard basis vectors, the e1 that's a step one to the right, and the e2 which is a step one up. Now, we say that this is a coordinate system because if I put any other vector on here, then this vector, the vector that's two steps to the right and, and two steps down, that I can represent that vector and represent the coordinates two minus two in terms of the standard basis vectors. So we can, for example, take this and we can manipulate them. Then the two minus two that we have, this is just written as in the standard basis as twice along the first standard basis vector and minus two along the second basis vector. So a coordinate system is just some way that I can keep track of points. I, I can keep track of the point like two minus two in terms of an instruction. It tells me where am I supposed to go. I'm supposed to go twice along this one vector and minus two along this other vector. Okay, so imagine instead of the standard basis vectors, that I had some other pair of basis vectors. How about this one, the B1 and the B2 that have been moved around a little bit. Now, the B1 and the B2, they are still a basis, and you'll remember that a basis meant this. Namely, if I had my two vectors, they needed to be literally independent, and they needed to span R2 if they were gonna be a basis for R2. Well, these two vectors that I have, they are indeed literally independent. Why? Well, geometrically, we can visualize this as saying, look, there's no way I can take some linear combination of these vectors that's going to add up to zero unless the lengths of the both of the vectors are zero. There's no way I can make some sort of loop that goes back down to the origin. So yes, I think I will say indeed that this is literally independent. And then for span, I want to show that any vector, like perhaps this green vector that I have, that it can also be written in terms of these two basis vectors. And indeed, that is also going to be true. Uh, for instance, we can go and take these particular ones and let's go and see how it can be written. Well, it turns out that the same vector, the same green vector we saw before, the same two minus two, but, but now I can write it like this. I can write it as three times the first basis vector, the one zero and minus one times the second basis vector, the one, two. So it is indeed in the span of these two vectors, the green vector is in the span of the two vectors, and I found the linear combination that it could be described as. If you didn't want to argue this sort of geometrically, you could go and put the two basis vectors into a matrix, you can go and do a row reduction, and you can look at the number of leading ones they have and answer the same question as we've seen in the previous videos. Now, in the standard basis, the two and the minus two were sort of the crucial numbers. They told us how to go twice along the E1 and minus two along the E2. But in this new basis, it's actually the three and the minus one that are the interesting numbers. It says go three times along the B1 and go minus one along the B2. The three and the minus one are the interesting numbers. So I want to introduce some new notation to you that captures the importance of the three and the minus one. Let's investigate what's going on generally. Here I have a particular basis, the B basis, and it's got vectors B1 and B2. Then if I take some other vector, some X vector, and write it as a linear combination in this basis, as in it's a C1 times the first basis vector B1 and a C2 times the second basis vector B2, then the new thing that I'm gonna define is this idea of a vector X subscript the B basis. As in, I mean, the vector x written in terms of the b basis. And what that is, it's just the coefficients of the c1 and the c2. So if the original vector x is written in the standard basis, then x subscript b stands for the coefficients when you write it in the b basis. So let's see how this works for the example that we had. The example that we had was that the 2 minus 2 could be written as 3 times the first basis vector 1, 0, and minus 1 the second basis vector, the 1, 2. So what are the important components? Well, the x in this scenario is the two minus two. This is written in the standard basis, and it just is an instruction. It tells me to go two times along the e1 and to go minus two times along the e2. That's what this vector is in the standard basis, an instruction of how to move. But then, if I want to look at this vector written in the b basis, what I get is the vector x subscript b and then it's just going to be equal to the 3 and the minus 1, the coefficients when I write it out in terms of the b basis. And now when I think about this particular vector, x written in the b basis, 
then what I think of it is, is it says to go three times along the B1 and minus one times along the B2. That is the instruction that this vector is going to represent. Now, a key thing to note about writing a vector in a different basis is that the actual vector, that doesn't change. Whether I'm using the standard basis, whether I'm using this new funky basis, the green arrow, the, the x value, that is the same in both. All that's changing is going to be how I describe it. So if I go and let these manipulate so I can see the different linear combinations, I have a way to write the green vector in the standard basis, I have a way to write the green vector in this new basis. But they just end up being the same vector. So it's just different ways to express the same vector. And then notationally, algebraically, we're also going to write it a bit different. For the standard basis, we just write it as 2 minus 2, and we, we don't do anything else, that's just it. But if it's the non-standard basis, I better tell you about it, so I'm going to write the value of x, and I'm going to put the sub b so that you know I'm talking about this particular basis, and now I get the value 3 minus 1. One final thought, if I want to make super explicit that I'm talking about the standard basis, I could also refer to x sub, and I put a sort of a scripty e thing there. And the idea is that you know how the standard basis is normally written as like e1 and e2? So this fancy script e just denotes that we're in the standard basis. Uh, often we just don't ever bother with this, but if you wanted to be consistent, have every vector always labeled what the basis was, that's how you could label it for the standard basis.